Hi, this is Manos Prilakis, presenting case 26 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a distal vessel perforation. It was actually not a CTO case, but a non-CTO standard case, in which the perforation was treated with a cover stamp. This patient had multiple previous procedures in the right coronary artery and had multiple layers of stent and now presented with recurrent instant restenosis in the mid-right coronary artery. He was not a candidate for coronary bypass and he was sent for a repeat attempt for PCI of the mid-RCA instant restenosis. Given the anticipated complexity with multiple layers of stand and severe calcification, we absized to an 8 French guide catheter, is a JR4, wired easily with the run-through, Ivus showed significant under-expansion of the previously deployed stents. Hence, we performed multiple balloon inflations with the 3O balloon up to 26 atmospheres. Unfortunately, that did not allow expansion of the lesion. Therefore, we performed additional balloon inflations up to 28 atmospheres. We used another 3.5 NC balloon and we also used an angioscalped up to 20 atmospheres. And at this point, we were about to use laser for doing um, another pass. However, note the location of this guide wire. This is a body wire we use because sometimes when balloon inflations are done with the body wire, that results in additional modification of the plaque in a way, uh, something like a poor man's cutting balloon. So this is a workhorse guide wire. However, it seems to be in a funny location. And after we did remove the guide wire, we now notice at that area contrast extravasation. These represent a distal guide wire perforation, which is very important to identify and treat early on because if left alone, patients may be doing okay initially since the amount of bleeding is very small. However, they can present subsequently with delayed tamponade as John Stathopoulos has very nicely shown in the previous JSC papers. So it is important to treat those perforations promptly before they cause tamponade. And the management is, according to management of any perforation, the first approach is to inflate the balloon proximally to occlude the vessel and stop the bleeding into the pericardium. Then, if the patient develops tamponade, pericardiocentesis is done, and intravenous fluids are given, the surgeons are notified just in case the patient requires surgery in the end. And then, if the extravasation continues, most of the distal vessel perforations are treated with embolization, typically with a fat or a coil. But if that fails, then a cover stand can be placed over the perforated branch origin to stop the bleeding. And then if that continues, a, a, a reversal with protamine is done. However, typically this is delayed until after the equipment is removed from the coronary artery to prevent uh, thrombosis. So our initial plan for treating this perforation, which is in a very, very small vessel, was to advance a small microcatheter into the vessel and then do fat embolization. However, we very soon found out that we could not advance a microcatheter into that branch because it was extremely small. And as a result, what we did is we advanced a second guide wire into the posterior descending artery. And then, through that wire, we deployed a 2.8 by 19 millimeter graft master cover stand that was post dilated, and that resulted in nice sealing of the origin of the branch and sealing of the perforation. We, we now see that branch may be feeling retrograde via collaterals, and that's a very important thing to visualize because sometimes those perforations can bleed retrograde. However, there was no persistent bleeding from that area. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is that even workhorse wires can cause perforation. Everyone is concerned for the polymer jacketed wires that if they go out, they can cause perforation, but they're not the only ones. Even a workhorse wire can cause perforation. Therefore, it doesn't matter what type of wire it is. It is particularly important to check the location of the wire and correct it throughout the case. The second one is that distal vessel perforation can cause delayed tamponade, as John Stathopoulos has shown in a case series in the past. However, fortunately, that was not the case in our patient. To prevent the distal bleeding and tamponade, the most common treatment is embolization, typically with fat, but also with coils. 
However, when this is not feasible, as in this case where the perforated vessel was extremely small and could not be wired, an alternative way to treat it is by implanting a cover stand across the ostium of the perforated branch, which then prevents the, the entrance of the blood into that vessel and subsequent bleeding. However, one wants to make sure that there is no retrograde flow into the perforation that can cause delayed tamponade as well. Another lesson is that having a big chi catheter does provide excellent options in case of complication. In this particular case, we fortunately had a large 8 frame guide, and this one allowed us to use the block and deliver technique, which is blocking the vessel proximal to the perforation with the balloon, and through the same guide catheter, delivering a cover stand to seal the perforation. Thank you.